Just as the man stepped into the bathroom, he heard a deafening roar from the sky. The next second, a massive explosion occurred. Looking up, he saw a hole blown through the ceiling. Suddenly, another explosion sounded, and the man hurried outside to investigate. On the street, he saw a crashed plane had collided with the building across the street. It turned out this plane was the culprit. When John returned home to tell his wife, Karen, about the incident, something even more terrifying happened. They heard a scream from downstairs. Rushing to the window, they saw two zombies attacking a man. The news on TV announced the outbreak of a zombie virus in the city, advising people to gather necessary supplies and stay indoors awaiting rescue. The couple gathered all the food they had at home, but it would only last a few days. To avoid starvation, they had to risk going outside to find more supplies. Luckily, their neighbor's door was open, and they brought back enough food to last. Now, they just needed to lock the doors and patiently wait for rescue. To be safe, they also prepared weapons to defend against zombies. But after waiting for several days, they still saw no sign of a rescue team. With nothing to do, they started exercising to pass the time. Just after finishing their workout, there was a knock on the door. Could it be the rescue team? John opened the door without hesitation, only to find a zombie standing there. Fortunately, they reacted quickly and shut the door in time. To prevent another zombie attack, the couple set up traps by the door and intensified their physical training. Then, the door was knocked on again. Learning from their previous experience, they were much more cautious this time. When they opened the door, they found two survivors asking for shelter. After confirming they were not infected, John generously agreed to let them in, but Karen was unhappy about it. Their food supply was already limited, and they knew nothing about these strangers. After some discussion, they decided to ask the newcomers to leave. However, when facing them, Karen couldn't bring herself to say it, leading to an awkward situation. The elderly couple noticed their hesitation and offered a solution. If they could stay, they would help gather more supplies. Reluctantly, John and Karen agreed. The next day, Karen, needing to use the bathroom urgently, found the woman inside deliberately taking her time and slowly coming out, further fueling Karen's annoyance. She decided to teach the shameless old couple a lesson, assigning them chores like washing dishes and organizing clothes, hoping they'd leave on their own. However, the couple didn't back down. Instead, they hatched a plan for revenge. They intended to act at night, but found John and Karen already asleep on the sofa, presenting a perfect opportunity. Leo glanced at a nearby sharp knife and discussed with his partner whether to proceed, but Karen, who had woken up, overheard them. To cover up the awkward moment, the woman quickly picked up a book to change the subject, but Karen had already figured out their plot. She ordered them to sit on the sofa and watch TV, then called John into the kitchen to tell him what she had just heard. John was unsure what to do, but Karen already had a plan. While Karen and John sat on the sofa, they didn't just idle around. They worked on strengthening their wrists to prepare for potential combat. Karen then brought out a plate of freshly made sweets. Leo eagerly ate them without hesitation, and despite her suspicions, the woman also had a piece. Unbeknownst to them, Karen had tampered with the sweets, and soon after eating, the old couple felt unwell and lost consciousness. Karen had intended to merely knock them out and send them away, but it turned into a fatal mistake. Now faced with an urgent need to deal with the bodies, John came into the living room and saw that the couple had turned into zombies. Karen took out a handgun and decisively put them down again, permanently this time. They then disposed of the bodies. Days passed without any sign of a rescue team. John and Karen lost hope of being saved and decided to make the most of their time together. Instead of living in constant fear, they embraced their remaining time, treating each day as if it were their last. They focused on enjoying their lives, creating a small semblance of normalcy in the midst of chaos. Just as they were preparing to indulge in their newfound freedom, there was another knock at the door. This time, the visitor claimed to be part of the rescue team. Karen, filled with hope, opened the door, only to be met with a harsh slap. Standing there were three ruthless criminals. The couple was quickly overpowered by the intruders. The leader, Martin, demanded they hand over all their supplies. To stay alive, John and Karen reluctantly complied. But Martin's greed extended beyond supplies. He dragged Karen into the bedroom with malicious intent. Karen pretended to go along with his demands, all the while forming a plan to fight back. As Martin became momentarily distracted, Karen seized the opportunity. She grabbed a handful of flour and threw it into his face. She quickly reached for a knife and stabbed him, killing him instantly. Hearing the commotion, Martin's two henchmen rushed to the scene, leaving John momentarily unguarded. 
One of the henchmen tried to call for help, but by then, John had had enough. Fueled by anger and desperation, he overpowered the intruder and eliminated the threat. After dealing with the bodies, the couple sat quietly on the sofa. They had been through so much that they had become almost numb to the violence and chaos surrounding them. They thought they were destined to wait for death in the apartment, but then they heard a broadcast outside, offering a glimmer of hope. The rescue team was calling for survivors. John and Karen excitedly shouted for help from behind the glass, but the broadcast moved further away. Desperate, they decided to venture outside to seek help. When they opened the door, they were met with a hallway full of zombies. John tried desperately to fend them off with a hammer, but it was futile. The zombies were unaffected. Realizing this was their only chance of rescue, they had no choice but to fight for their lives. They suited up with makeshift armor and weapons. The sounds of their struggle echoed through the building. After what felt like an eternity, they retreated back into their apartment, breathless and battered. They hadn't managed to break through the horde. Even worse, Karen had been bitten on her thigh by one of the zombies. Although John understood the gravity of the situation, he tried to comfort Karen. He told her that the infection only set in after death, like with the elderly couple. As long as she stayed alive, she wouldn't turn. He also mentioned that there was a vaccine outside, and once the rescue team arrived, she would be fine. The next day, Karen felt increasingly unwell. Not wanting to burden John, she attempted to leave without telling him, but John caught her. He wouldn't let her go, and instead prepared a cup of blood plasma for her. After drinking it, Karen's hunger subsided significantly, but she knew this wasn't a permanent solution. She was aware of her eventual fate. Despite this, John refused to give up, holding on to even the slightest hope. As they waited for rescue, they indulged in fantasies of a beautiful future. John painted a picture for Karen. Soon, the rescue team would knock on their door, they would be saved, Karen would receive the vaccine, and they would live a carefree life together. But as he spoke, tears welled up in his eyes. The world had other plans, and eventually, Karen left John. She left a farewell note in the bathroom. Realizing what had happened, John mustered the courage to open the spare bedroom door. There, he found Karen, already transformed. To prevent herself from harming John, she had tied herself up. Heartbroken, John knew he had to make a tough decision. Holding a handgun, he aimed it at Karen. Time seemed to stand still as he wrestled with his emotions. When the rescue team finally arrived at their apartment, they were met with an unimaginable sight. John, unable to bring himself to end Karen's life, had chosen to succumb to the virus and transform alongside her. Huff. <sighs>